Hello, greetings. In this tutorial, we will learn how to do a forward pass and a backward pass and use this to calculate the float and ultimately to transfer this information onto a Gantt chart. So over here, the logical uh, diagram of the network has already been uh, done showing the precedence of uh, uh, different activities and the relationship between them. So we always assume while manually scheduling a project that a project starts at day zero. If you are using a software, you, uh, the software typically assumes the current date as the start of the project, but manually scheduling, we always assume it's the zero as the starting date of the project. So we assume that the project starts at day zero, and that's why we have put uh, zero. Uh, uh, by the way, uh, you can see the legend over here. So the top left box basically shows you the early start time, which is zero for activity A. Now, if uh, uh, the activity starts at day zero, it has a total duration of two weeks, so it should be finished by week two. Likewise, the activity B begins at start of the relationship. As you can see in the logical diagram, there is no preceding activity before activity B. So that's the very first activity, so therefore we assume it starts at day zero. It has a duration of four weeks, so we uh, put early finish time for activity B as four. Now, activity C could begin uh, once activity A has finished, so it could begin after week two, and that's why we have put in uh, two in the early start uh, time for activity C, and it has a duration of five weeks, as you can see in the duration box for activity C, and thus we put uh, early finish time for activity C as week seven. If we move to activity A, uh, it would begin uh, after week four, uh, once activity B has finished, so the early start time for activity E is four, and it has a duration of one week, so four plus one is five, so early finish time for activity E will be five. Now over here you can see activity D is a merge activity. Both activity A and activity B has to finish before activity D would begin. And the rule of thumb uh, we follow while doing a forward pass is always to choose the largest uh, value uh, while doing a forward pass. So over here, we will assume that activity D would be begin after vi uh, week four. Uh, obviously, it cannot begin after week two because by that time, activity B would not have finished and uh, as you can see the logical relationship activity b must finish before activity d can start right so the duration for activity d is three weeks so that means the early finish for activity d is seven weeks now let's move to activity f activity f can begin soon after activity c has finished that's the early start time for activity f is seven which uh, is was basically the early finish time for activity c with a duration of two, the early finish time for activity F would be uh, nine weeks. Now, uh, activity G uh, again is a merge activity, and uh, the rule of thumb that we have to rem remember is to choose the largest of the two, uh, which is uh, we could have selected five or seven, and we would choose seven because activity D must finish before activity G uh, could begin. So that's we put early start time for activity G as seven and seven plus four is 11. And let's move to the last activity of this network, which is 11. Again, uh, it is a merge activity and we have chosen the largest of the two values. So from nine and 11, we have chosen 11 and the duration is two weeks and thus the early finish time for activity H is 13. So this basically tells us that this project would take eventually 13 weeks to complete. Now the early finish time for the last activity becomes the late finish time for the last activity. So over here, uh, we will just copy the early finish time into the late finish time. Um, so the late finish time for this project is 13. And uh, while doing a backward pass, we will subtract two from 13. So the late start time for activity H would be 11 weeks, which is 13 minus two. 
if you move backwards uh, the late start time uh, for uh, sorry late finish time for activity G would be 11 weeks and the late start time would be 7 moving on to activity F uh, again the late finish uh, would be uh, 11 which is basically the late finish of activity H and uh, it becomes late finish for activity F as well and the late start would be 9 for activity E the late finish would be 7 which was uh, the late start time for activity G and uh, the uh, late start is 7 minus 1 which is 6 for activity D it is uh, the late finish time is uh, 7 and the late start time would be 7 minus 3 which is 4 and uh, for activity C the late finish time is 9 and the late start time would be 9 minus 5 that is 4 in the backward pass, in case of a, a merge, we always choose the uh, smallest of the two values, which is in contrast with what we do in the forward pass. So um, uh, the late finish time for activity A would be 4, uh, as it has a path leading backward both from activity D and activity C. And the late start time would be 4 minus 2, which is 2. For activity uh, B, uh, if the path leading from uh, uh, D indicates the late uh, finish should be 4, whereas path leading from activity E uh, shows that the uh, late finish should be 6, we will choose the smallest value while doing a backward path. So we will choose 4 as the late finish time and uh, uh, the late start time would be 4 minus 4, 0. So that completes our forward pass. And Okay, so once you have completed your forward pass and backward pass, the next job is to calculate the float or slack, right? So the float is usually calculated by subtracting the early start time from late start time or early finish time from late finish time. So over here for activity A, you can see uh, you have to basically subtract the top uh, right quadrant from the bottom right quadrant. So uh, or a top left quadrant from the bottom left so 2 minus 0 is 2 and likewise 4 minus 2 is 2 so the float for activity A is 2 which basically means you can delay activity A by 2 weeks without further delaying the project float for activity C is 2 again and uh, 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 the uh, uh, late uh, float for activity C is uh, 2 for activity B the uh, slack is or float is 0 for activity D you can see see again the float or slack is 0 which means that this is a critical activity and it should not be delayed activity E ha has a float of 2 which means it can be delayed by two weeks without having any impact on the project deadline activity F has a slack of two weeks so again it's a non-critical activity activity G has a slack of zero weeks which means it is a critical activity so as a project manager you should be watchful that this activity is delivered on time any delay on activities with zero float will have an impact on your project deadline and likewise activity H is a critical activity with a slack of zero okay so once you have identified your forward and backward path and have calculated your uh, float or slack you can identify the critical path which is basically a path comprising activities with zero float or zero slack so here you can see b d g and h activities comprise a path comprising activities with zero float or zero slack so this is our critical path and as a project manager you should be very concerned that none of these activities got delayed if they do your project would uh, uh, would not be able okay so the last step in this problem solving is to draw the Gantt chart right so we can see starting with the first activity uh, uh, it starts the early start time is uh, week 0 and the early finish is week 2 and if we want to draw a bar chart or a Gantt chart based on the early start times we will use uh, the early start times which are shown in the top boxes over there so uh, it basically means that we have to do work 
in week one and week two. W here symbolizes work. But at the same time, we have got a float of two weeks for activity A. So for some reasons, if activity A could not be uh, uh, completed in week two, we still have got some leeway, some uh, a cushion to absorb any delays. If we look at activity B, in contrast, it's a critical activity. It doesn't have any float. So it to keep the project in time, it's important that work is accomplished as uh, planned in, in the first four weeks. If we move to activity C, it has an early start of we, uh, at week after week two and it finishes after week seven and uh, it's a five weeks duration so we uh, symbolizes work in the first five weeks but also it has got a float of two weeks which is shown by uh, as in uh, after week 7 and week 8. Looking at activity D, it's a three weeks duration activity uh, and with zero float, so no float here. It must be completed in time. Activity E has just got a duration of one week with a float of two weeks. Activity F would begin once activity C has been completed and uh, it has a duration of two weeks with a float of two weeks. Activity G begins after week seven and it, ha it has a duration of four weeks with no float. It's a critical activity and the very last activity H would start after activity F and G has been completed and it has got uh, a two week duration with zero float. So this completes this problem. You can uh, see uh, we learn how to do a forward path and a backward path. We use this information to identify our critical path and later we transfer this information onto a bar chart or a Gantt chart that we can use to uh, schedule our, our project. Thanks a lot for your attention and uh, keep an outlook uh, for new movies uh, in this